Hello, my name is Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm a hobbyist seamstress and costume maker. And today I'm going to make my um, riding coat habit vest for the riding coat. Um, so here it is, and if you guys want to know how I made it, um, please continue watching. I made a few mistakes, but hopefully they'll help you in your costume. My baby kitten. Okay, so what I did to make this vest is I got this outlander pattern and I'm, I'm modifying it to make it more historically accurate. That's kind of what I like to do because I'm not that great at pattern making, so I'm just practicing. And I'm using some linen left over from my linen shirt and some cotton just to line it, make it a little more fun. They would have probably lined it with all linen, but I don't have enough, so. And this silk fay, fay? <laughs> It has little tiny ribs and it's silk, which is nice because it's like a little thicker material, so it holds shape really well. So what I do is I um, adjusted the pattern. I had to make the bodice a little bit longer. You can see the um, tape marks because my um, middle area is actually longer. I needed it to be to fit the um, design. So now I'm just cutting out the pattern. I'm cutting out the back piece in um, the linen. And that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna make it a tie down like they did um, back in the day. Because back then they would make these vests and the, there would be a tie down, or waistcoats, I guess. There'd be a tie down the middle that they would like spiral lace. So that's what I'm trying to make here. All right, so I'm going to just cut the fancier, well, prettier lining out of um, just the front kind of piece and how I'm going to modify this pattern is I'm going to tape down that first bit and then I'm going to just lay the second piece over it because there was no really seam I mean I tried to look up pictures and it seemed like there really wasn't a seam where this pattern has it so I want it to be as historically accurate as possible and there doesn't seem to be a seam so I'm trying to make just one large piece um, because, you know, they wore, wore the stays underneath, so they didn't really need the seam. It was like a conical shape that the stays made. So that's what I'm trying to achieve here. And then I just did the same thing with the silk. This is going to be the outer um, part of the riding habit vest. Um, I'm sorry if you hear airplanes. I just live close to where there would be airplane noises, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so anyway, I cut out the um, silk like sort of front part, and then I'm also going to do one side panel, because this is what it looked like in photographs to me, so that's what I was trying to do, um, of old historical garments, so I'm trying to make it look like that. Um, so I cut out like the side back piece in the silk and then also I'm doing the peplum. And I make sure I follow the like grain line that the pattern gave me for this whole thing because I want it to, um, I don't want it to stretch or something be on the bias like wrong. So, um, for the peplum I wanted it shorter because the pictures are shorter. So I just modified that peplum from the pattern and I, um... I just cut it shorter. I I'm not sure how long I made it, but maybe like eight inches or something. I don't know. But um, so I just marked out like how how many inches, and I just measured that all around. Okay, so now I'm just pinning it together. I'm gonna pin the lining first, and down the back of the um like middle part of the linen, I'm not going to sew it all the way down because I'm going to add ties there which is what was there, so. Then I'm just going to go to the sewing machine and um, sew, it, sew it all down. 
Now, as far as I saw, the vest didn't have any sort of boning in it. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure, but like I didn't see anything about boning. I put boning in the jacket. Um, so, hopefully that's correct. And I did the same thing with the um, outer part. The outer um, layer of the, with the silk. And I also left that back part open. So here it is pinned. Here it is all sewn together with the sewing machine. So now I'm going to add the um, darts, pleat, uh, darts, I guess, in the front. Um, and the pattern tells you where they are. Um, it kind of seems like in pictures it's just kind of where the boobs are. So adjust that how you see fit for yourself. Um, for me, this pattern pretty much worked for me, so I just um, did that on both of the garment, both of the layers, and then I sewed it with the sewing machine, and then I ironed it down. And I used chalk to measure out the dart. So after I ironed like the seams, I laid down the um, lining as you can see here and then on top of it I put the um, outer um, shell. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sew down the front of both these sides to make that like front seam and then I'm going to turn it inside out and then continue. I'm going to fold under all the other edges but so that's what I'm doing here. Okay, so here it is. I just um, I sewed down the edges of the um, vest, and then I turned it inside out, and I um, I just pinned that top part. I just wanted to just see if it would somewhat fit, if I need to adjust the like front, make it smaller or whatever. So it looks pretty good, um, and I tried it on myself too, just to make sure, and it looks pretty good so far. Now, in retrospect, I think, and and, and I don't know the historical accurate way, but um. I should have probably done like finished this part and like done the buttonholes and everything and then um put on the peplum because um like it would be easier to figure out like how the peplum would lie with it buttoned um but I didn't do that so hopefully you guys will not be like me and um make it easier for yourself so <laughs> but anyway so it looks pretty good so far and you can see the back um it's like basically done um i'm gonna need to sew down the front and there's the back too so far okay so now what i have what i have to do is um connect the lining with each other and then connect the the top shell with each other because right now i only have like that front bit 
And what I do is I just tear, turn it inside out and I just make sure the seam, I'm going to sew down the seam on the um, sewing machine for the inside and then I'm also going to do it for the shell. I'm not sure if this video can really show you what I'm doing, but I hope you guys will understand. So basically the inside is going to be finished and the outside, so you won't see the seam. And it kind of seemed a lot of things were left like unfinished inside. I'm not sure if this would have been one of them because, you know, they, they like to adjust a lot of things. Which is nice to hear because I, sometimes it gets annoying to like make sure all these seams look perfect. But um, like like this like I think the sleeves they didn't really necessarily finish every time. But you know we just have to finish everything. So um, uh yeah. So I'm not sure if that's historically accurate, but that's what I did to make a nice finished seam. And then once I've sewn that on the sewing machine, I go ahead and just press out everything and make sure it lines up. So right now you're going to have that top shoulder seam is going to be done. So it's going to be open in like the back, it's going to be open in the front, or like the neckline, and it's going to open in the bottom where the peplum is. So now I'm going to sew the peplum, and I just um, have the outside like... wrong side versus wrong side. I'm just going to sew it all around. And then I'm going to turn it inside out. I'm going to cut off those, you know, I'm going to cut the corners. I'm going to cut little triangles out so I can then fold it out again so and then i'm gonna iron it so it's a nice crisp like peplum and the top is gonna be open And now I'm going to attach it to the bodice, which again, in retrospect, I probably should have done this last, but hey, what can we do? <laughs> um, it's always after you do something where you feel like, ah, could have done that. Hmm, would have been easier. Would have made more sense, but hey. Um, so I just sewed like on the seam. Um, so the seam matches inside and outside because the end of the um shirt or the vest part is not finished yet so i just turned that so then it's like a big complete thing but i only did the outside shell so the outside shell is sewn but the inside part is not because i'm going to hand stitch that um because i want to make sure the fit is right and um I don't want any like top stitching yet. I'm gonna hand put the top top stitching to make it look really nice and historically pretty. Okay, so here is how it looks, um, like, on the mannequin. You can see this part is open, so I want it that way because I'm going to stitch the lining over top it to finish it off. And I'm going to leave this back part open because I'm not finishing that yet. And see how it's a bit long? I just left it that way because I wanted to, like, adjust it once, it, once I finished, you know, hand sewing it, so...
So I just uh, pinned this into place. I did some um, whip stitches around the whole thing and um, you know finished it all the way to the point of um, not to the opening yet because the peplum is not attached to that back panel so I left that open I'm gonna finish that later all right so here it is on the mannequin um, the inside is done-ish, and I just have to now finish those edges and the outside of the back, basically. So here I'm just um, finishing the armholes, and I'm going to finish the neckline. So I just turn in the seams like this, and I'm just going to whip stitch that all around. I'm going to top stitch this later. Um, but you really don't even see the whip stitches because they're really small. So I just, that's what I do for the hole. I do it for the neckline as well. So I do this part for the linen part too. And for the linen part, obviously I use white thread. Um, for the other one, you can use, the, I use the burgundy thread so it wouldn't show. All right, so now I've finished um, the armhole edges, the neckline. I need to finish that back part where the ties are going to go. So I just turned the insides inside and then I just um, did the same thing I did for the other ones. I just whip stitched them down. Um, I saw some pictures where this is more like a... I saw a picture where it did look like this uh, from historically... From a, a historical arm. It did look like this where it's just like the seam and it kind of opens like a triangle. So I did choose to go this way because it was easier. But I have seen where it almost looks like a square. Um, I wasn't really sure how to do that. It seemed kind of hard, so I just opted for this option. Um, yeah, I didn't want to look, look like a butcher job, so. Um. And now I need to finish the, like, end of the, um, backside of the vest and those, like, put the end of the peplum. So I just turn it all inside, just like I was doing the rest of the time, and again, I just whip stitch it around. And for the linen part, I use the white thread, and for the burgundy, I use the burgundy thread. So once I have that, the, the whole garment is basically has no unfinished edges, it's pretty just finished. So now I need to add the buttonholes to the back of the um, vest. Alright, so I'm going to add the buttonholes, which is eyelet holes for lacing. Um, so for me, I did it an inch apart each hole and it turned out pretty good. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And I just used some embroidery thread. And, um, this is me making the eyelet holes. Um.
and they're not perfect, but you know, I was looking at some historical garments, and it's like, they didn't look perfect, okay? They weren't like perfect, you know, machine made button or eyelid holes. Like, you know, it was, I was like, yes, they weren't perfect. I mean, like, back in the day, they were just like humans like us, so we can't make everything perfect, so. And, you know, there was bad dressmakers and good dressmakers. But I had been a good dressmaker, I don't know. I probably would have been a mediocre one. So, even back in the day. So, oh, and another thing, like, you know, not, like, everybody did not just make their own clothes. Like, there's this fallacy that we just made our own clothes and everyone was so accomplished. I mean, they had dressmakers for this. I mean, you had to be in a profession. You had to, you know, if you were a dressmaker, it was like a certain profession that was only dressmaking. You had to get, you know, almost certified in it. I don't know the exact thing because, I mean, I read a brief thing in the, you know, I I don't even know which book, but I mean, these people, these were professionals, you know, so it's not like, you know, just every schmo could just make a dress like that that's that's the fallacy that we have like oh yeah we can just everybody can just make these dresses and like perfectly do it anyway that's my diatribe for the video (laughs) okay so then to finish it for a nice look i just tap stitched it now i made really tiny little stitches that you really couldn't see but you know you still get the look i've seen other ones where it's like you can see all the little stitches which looks nice too so that's up to you whatever you think i meant i probably the other way not the way i did it would be more historically accurate but what what can i do i don't know so now i'm going to make the buttons and i wanted these to be covered buttons because that's what they did in the day and i couldn't find any like wooden discs because that's what they used in the size i wanted and these the, the other discs were a little thick but i'm using these thicker discs for the riding coat but i just got some buttons in the size that i wanted um and i'm going to show you guys how they made these covered buttons so what i do is i take the button that i want and i lay it on my scrap of fabric and I make a mark around the button, each side of the button, okay? And then I make a half of the button above, below, um, I make another mark. Not a full button, just a half of the button. You see, I just put it in this center where like the middle's kind of touching. So then, once I made that second circle, I cut it out. All right, so once I do that, because this um, silk really frays, I put some fray check, fray check, whatever, um, just around the edges of the button and I wait for that to dry. Now they did use some sort of like fray check, I know historically, some sort of gum or something, I don't know. And you could probably make that if you want, so, but I don't really feel like it, so yes, I, I use the fray check, which works perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, because they left a lot of things unfinished inside the garment, so... All right, so once I have my circle that I'm gonna use for the button, I use my thread, and this is just, you know, normal thread, nothing like embroidery thread or anything like that. And I just make tiny little stitches around the whole thing so I can gather it all. So that's what I'm gonna do. I make tiny little stitches. I place the button in the center of that and then I just pull. So now the button is encased in sort of like a little sack. Once I have the button in its little sack, I just stitch like on the opposite sides, like almost on the opposite side, just around the whole button until it's sort of tightly, you know, held in a little cloth casing. 
So that's what I do. So it gets easier as you go on because the stitches get tighter. Okay, so once I, you know, make that tight little casing, I just knot it off and that's it. And we're going to show you later how to actually put those buttons on the jacket. So here I'm just going to the top of the jacket. I'm making where I want my buttonholes to be with some chalk. Uh, I wanted them to be about like one inch apart. I thought that looked best. So I think I made 15 of those little cloth buttons. Um, so that's what I did. And I went to the machine to make these buttonholes and yeah, I messed them up on the machine. Like, I don't know, like I had the wrong settings or something. I don't really know, but I messed them up and like, what, one of them looks like terrible. Like I, I called the Franken like button. Ugh, it looks so bad. I, I literally cried when I when I saw it. Like, I'm not even joking. I cried. Like I was like, why? Because you know it's the last thing on the jacket. And you you put the buttons. I I have like anxiety to put buttonholes. But anybody else have that? <laughs> so, but you know I kind of just like went over them hand stitched. So I think it it looks a lot better now. Um. I'm not the best at buttonholes, so, and I get very nervous making them, especially with the silk. Like, does anybody know how to do a silk buttonhole better? Like, I just don't know, like, the trick. Seems like when I go into the fabric, like, it just rips it. I, I don't know. So, yes, the Franken button. <laughs> no, why? <laughs> you know, and then I left and I came back and I was like, wow, it's not that bad. Like, I, I really had a mental breakdown over nothing. Like, you know, this is really dramatic, but anyway, <laughs> you get really attached to these things you make. But like I said, there's no, you know, they didn't make perfect buttonholes all the freaking time in the 18th century. So, you know, some somebody had to be bad at it, but they were walking around with it. So, <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to attach the buttonhole, the, the buttons. And how I do this is I, um, first I mark off like where the buttons are supposed to go. I, I, I line up the jacket and I make sure it's 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 accurately going to actually have the button fit. So then I make I pull the thread through and this is using two um of two strands of um embroidery thread floss. I, I separated it. And I poke through where I want to go and I put put it through on the edge of the button. And then I, you know, put it back through the hole where I came out and I kind of make it loose. You don't want it to be really tight. Um, then I come back through the hole and I go on the other side and do the other thing uh, and I go back inside and I do it again on the other side. So there's going to be four places where I'm doing this and it's almost like a little like, you're making it like it's almost like a little comb. And then for the last step, I pull through and I just encase, 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 circle, 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 um, tightly around. And then once it's pretty secure in there, like you want it a little bit loose because you want it to like actually fit in the button thing. But um, once it feels, you know, secure enough to me, then I stick back through the needle, come out the other side and I make a knot. So that is how, and this is as far as I know, is how they put these cloth buttons in the 18th century there's another way if you're gonna do metal buttons but um, I'm not doing them right now so so then I went ahead and I just added all the buttons 
it looks so cool with all the buttons it looks so legit you know a lot of the problems that you're like oh these people are gonna be looking at the this problem that problem honestly people are just gonna see the like the, the overall view it's like when you look at yourself in the mirror you're like i'm so ugly because of this this thing on my nose but you know really people just see your whole face and that's zoning in on one thing on you so that's how it is for these these outfits you know what i mean <laughs> like they didn't they're not perfect so um and it's fun to make it it's fun to sort of improve so that is the complete look i think it looks pretty good i th- I think actually I would have redone the peplum like I said. Um, I would have added it later and it kind of more pictures. This peplum doesn't really close like I have it. Um, it more kind of goes out, you know, and sort of like a almost like a tapered look. Um, like going out. So if I was to redo this, I would do that. Um, this is the back, the spiral lacing. I just used some ribbon that I found, like I couldn't find anything else for this for a second, so I just use this like random rhythm. But I think they would have spiral laced it, as far as I know, because that's what they did spiral lacing. So, um, which actually takes takes up a lot less ribbon, so it makes more sense to me. But here it is, you know, of its glory. I think it looks really nice, um, apart from the Franken buttonhole. But eh, we're not gonna talk about that. We're not gonna talk about that. Um. So, so yeah, this is it. Looks really good. I'm going to do a try on of everything. I'm going to try on the the linen, the, the, because, you know, I really had to try on the stays and everything to actually have the jacket fit or the vest fit. So I'm not going to do it right now, but I'm going to try on everything on. I'm going to go to the park. I'm going to take some pictures, some, and and some videos. I'm going to share that with you guys. Um, so you can see like the actual final, you know, result. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and consider supporting me on my Patreon. Thank you.